share it with people around them. Um, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what that vision is all about. And then, and then we'll get into some of the details about where we're at with the project. But let's start you know, by talking a little bit about the current context. Why would somebody want to do this? And why is this necessary? The way that we connect to the internet today is really controlled by a few companies. Usually two to six companies in any one country in the world. And there are some upsides to that. Uh, but there are also some downsides. Um, all of the profits from providing internet connectivity go to those companies. Um, the innovation cycle is a little slow because you're dealing with oligopolists. And so the internet has grown more slowly and internet access speeds are relatively slow here in the United States as well as in many parts of the world. And, and then of course you've got in America and elsewhere ISPs monitoring your traffic taking that data about your usage and then selling it to advertisers who can then advertise back to you. Uh, and we learned through Edward Snowden that of course governments are able to also monitor this stuff and know way more about what you're doing than we would have even imagined. So th this is not at all how you know, some of the pioneers of the internet imagined this playing out. The internet was meant to be decentralized. It was meant to be resilient. It was meant to be not controlled by any one company or person. And that's not where we are today. What Open Garden is trying to do with its protocol is really reshape this direction. With our protocol and enabling anybody to share their connectivity, we can make the internet faster, cheaper, and more private. We can make it faster because we're developing it as a mesh protocol so that you can simultaneously connect to multiple Open Garden hotspots at a time. The hotspots are powered using Wi Fi. We can make it cheaper because people are selling unused bandwidth. And we can make it more private because we're adding VPN protocols to our stack so that an open garden provider can't see what you're doing online, but your ISP can't either. And in time, through a fully decentralized VPN, all open garden hotspots can become exit nodes on a fully decentralized VPN, which then means that it becomes very censorship resistant very difficult for governments to monitor what you're doing online. So that's what we're trying to do. We've, we've developed the protocol, we put it into um, an app that we built as a reference app. In time, it will be in other apps, and then in hardware as well. Uh, let, let's talk about where, where we've gotten to as a project. Uh, we're, we're not really just a white paper and an idea. Uh, We've got uh, the product already built. You can download it and use it in Google Play today. Um, our token is live on Stellar Mainnet already. Um, and we're going to be doing our formal network launch very, very soon. We'll be on iOS shortly after that. And then in the fall, you will be able to buy Wi-Fi hardware and use it running our protocol built in. So you can buy this device called the Wi-Fi range extender, plug it in at home, and enable your neighbors to connect to the internet and use the internet through you. They don't need to pay Comcast directly anymore, they just pay you. And our token and our protocol enables not just a peer-to-peer -peer connection, but a peer-to-peer -peer payment. We're not in the middle, we don't generate any revenue from this. It's intended to be a fully decentralized network. So this is what we're talking about when we talk about creating a network of millions of people. We call it the internet of us. A little bit more about our project uh, status. We, uh, we raised $17 million in a private presale. Uh, we're not doing a public presale or an ICO. Uh, we're based here in the Bay Area. We have 23 full time people, mostly engineers, mostly network engineers, people with experience from Samsung, from Apple, from Cisco, who are helping to build this protocol. So I'm going to uh, uh, pause here and, and just open it up for questions. I know we have extra time. But um, I, I'd rather just take questions from the audience. Are there any questions for Paul? Hi. One question. Very good. I'm always looking for free, you know, uh, internet connection. I can use it anywhere, anytime. Yeah. So, do you offer this kind of product or technology? Because it's an internet of us, not another kind of a tokenized, you know, pay service, right? Yeah, so what, what we've done by building a decentralized network is enable the people sharing their internet to set the price. It's up to them. The, the internet belongs to the community, 
and the community is made up of people. Well, those people get to decide how much they want to charge. And some of them will just want to make it free because they want to share their connectivity. But other people will want to earn something back for sharing their unused bandwidth. So we don't set the price. It's not our network. The idea here is the internet belongs to the community, and we're just providing tools for them to do that. We're providing tools for people to build uh, their own hotspot or build a whole network of hotspots that they manage. It's not our network. You know, I hadn't thought about that until just now. Yes. <laughs> but that is, a, that is a good question, though. So, and the answer to that is uh, we, we aren't trying to make money with the protocol. Um, we've created our own token. Uh, we've sold some of it to investors to help fund our operations, and that's what the $17 million was for. Uh, we're giving away most of the tokens to the community, actually, um, to help bootstrap the network. And at the end of that, our company, our team, will have some percentage of the tokens. And if we need to fund further operations, we can peel off some of that and sell it at a later date. Uh, but that's quite some time from now. We have more than two years of runway at this point. Hi. Uh, do you think your project would force some of the um, ISPs like Comcast to rethink their model of unlimited bandwidth in paper, maybe, or something? Well, how do you see the your project change the future of uh, internet connectivity? So we think about the response from the industry in a couple of phases. And I'll use a quote that is often misattributed to Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> uh, first, they ignore you. You're doing a great job of that now. Then they laugh at you. Then they fight you, and then you win. And, and I really think it will play out that way. Uh, initially, they're not even paying attention. And, they, and I've met operators. I've worked for three mobile operators. I've spent 15 years in mobile communications. So I talk to people, and some of them think it's laughable what we're trying to do. Um, but <laughs> the point at which regular consumers, I'm not talking about crypto nerds, I'm not talking about crypto investors, regular people see that they can buy this thing for $25, plug it in, and cut their internet bill in half. This becomes something that's really interesting to a lot of people, not just crypto nerds like us. And, and that's the point at which I think they'll get concerned. Now, having worked on the centralized side of the table, the network operator, operator side of the table, I understand some of the levers that they can pull and ones that are really hard for them to, to pull. Like it's moving away from an unlimited model in the oligopolistic model that they've gotten out is really tough to do. And so for Comcast to move away from an uncapped model or kind of throttled after a terabyte, is, is tough because the average person doesn't understand what a gigabyte of data means. They don't understand that, it, I, you know, I, I buy this Comcast plan and now I can watch 10 hours of movies or not. Like people don't understand or comprehend very well what those numbers mean, uh, how many bits or how many bytes mean anything. They just want to watch TV. It's like 80% of internet traffic now is just watching videos. And, and so it needs to stay at the same sort of model. Ultimately, I believe that network operators will want to embrace a protocol like this. Yes, I think what we're doing has the potential to be very disruptive to them. But in the long run, I see them adopting it. We raised money last year from Verizon because they are interested in using a protocol like this. Hi. Yeah, I paid thirty five dollars for AT and T for unlimited, you know, data plan. Yeah, so I can connect to internet anytime and yeah, anywhere. But you said that you offer like $25, you know, for, but you have no control for the, your community, right? The, how they offer the service, either it's free or paid, right? That's one question. How can you ed educate your community, your user, you know, to lower the cost? Sure. Another question is 3G is right on the corner, right? If it's 3G available, you know, then the bandwidth, you know, kind of almost, you know, uh, faster than they lie, some kind like that. So how can you uh, phrasing that kind of a, a change? Yeah. Sure. Uh, 
So the answer uh, to your first question about how do you educate the community? We, we built into the reference app that we designed the ability for you to see all the pricing of people around you. So how much are other open garden providers charging? Uh, so that when you decide how much you want to charge, you have kind of a good indicator uh, of what is normal. So you're not charging $100 in a gigabyte kind of territory. Uh, so that's one, one way to help solve that problem. Uh, we're not trying to control how much people charge, and I think that's really important. Um, the, the other part about you know, $35 for AT&T and there being you know, good cell phone connectivity everywhere is a great point. The, the starting point that we see is people sharing their home internet. Uh, and so in apartment buildings, in condos, where there's a fair amount of density of people nearby, sharing your home internet is a great starting point. Because then you really only need a one-to-one -one network. You don't need to walk outside your apartment and have ubiquity, like a Verizon coverage map. You just need a neighbor who's sharing the internet uh, and you're interested in connecting to them. You just need one other person in your whole universe for this to actually have a lot of utility. And that's really the starting point. We're, we're gonna work this summer to put our protocol into ride-sharing vehicles, so that when passengers get in the back of an Uber or a Lyft or a Didi or uh, a Grab Taxi, they can get free internet. And we think that that's a great way to help grow phone-to-phone -phone connectivity so that drivers who are sharing their time, sharing their cars, can also share their internet and make money. 